Let's say you want to work on a project together with a friend. So the two of you will be creating comments on the project itself. And let's also say your friend has created the project and has initialized a repository on GitHub. What you need to do next is to copy the project on the remote back onto your local computer and start coding from that point onwards. In Git, you can do that process by doing a git clone. A clone basically does three things at once. Git init, which means you initialize a repository. The second thing is to add the remote URL. So you add the GitHub repository that your friend has created. And the third thing is to pull the repository onto your computer. Of course, you can do these three steps separately if you want to, but a git clone makes it much easier to copy the entire project. So how do you clone a project? I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To clone a project, what you need to do is to go to the project that you want to clone. So in this case, let's say the project we want to clone is called Typey. Typey is a project that I made to make typography easy when you're trying to create websites. What we're going to do is to clone Typey onto the computer um, right now. To clone Typey or to clone any GitHub project, you go to the project repository and click on the big green button that says clone or download. When you click on that button, you'll see a URL. Now, you can copy this URL. Once again, make sure it says clone with SSH. The difference between SSH and HTTPS is when you use SSH, you don't have to enter your username and password when you push or pull. Um, so always clone with SSH. Once you copy the URL, open up fork. When you open up fork, you can clone the repo by going into file, then select clone. Fork will automatically fill up the URL that you have copied into the repository URL folder. The parent directory in this case will be git because that is where all our git repositories are located. Fork does this for you automatically, but if you want to change the directory, you can change it. Name will be the name of the folder that you want to put on the on your local computer. This name will be the same as the GitHub repository name by default. But if you want to change it, like say typey something else, you can change it. Most of the time we will leave the name as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and click clone to clone the typey project on the computer. So once you click clone, um, Fork will get to work and it will download the files onto your, the computer. When you are done cloning the project, Fork will create a separate tab in its interface. This separate tab thing when cloning a project is unique to Fork. The idea is once you have cloned the project onto your computer, you will be able to see the project in your Git client of choice. In Fork, you can click on the search button that is the first button on the top left hand corner and you will see that there is typey and then there is project. So we have two repositories in our um, that is that, that Fork is managing right now. And when you click on typey, you can see likewise the changes in the comments and the branches and the remotes that we have as before. Now to make sure that the project is copied onto your computer, you can go open up the git folder, which is the parent directory. In this git folder, you can see project, which is what we had before, and typey, which is what we just cloned onto our computer. So this is how you make sure that the cloning actually works. If you open up the folder, you can see all the different files that the project has. At this point, one thing to take note of is you can commit to the repository as usual on your computer, but you will not be able to push onto the remote repository. 
This is because you don't have access to write onto the repository yet. This is an automatic feature to prevent unauthorized people from changing the code that you have put up onto the remote repository. Now, if you want to change the code directly, that means if you want to commit and push directly to the repository, you need to have collaborator access. What this means is your friend who has created the remote repository needs to add you as a collaborator. To add you as a collaborator, they can go to their repository, click on settings, then click on collaborators. They will have to enter their password to continue because this is a very um, important access, right? So once you have entered your password, you will be able to see the collaborator screen uh, that shows who has pushed access to the repository. If your friend wants to add you to the repository, you can ask them to enter your GitHub username and then click on Add Collaborator. I'm not going to add a collaborator in this video because I don't have anyone I want to add to the Type P project right now. To sum up, you can copy a remote repository from GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket onto your computer easily with a command called git clone. Git clone does three things. It initializes an empty repository on your computer. It adds the URL to the remote and then it performs a git pull. With that, we're done with this video. In the next video, I will show you how to resolve git conflicts. I'll see you in the next video.